Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. <laughs> hello. So we just are so excited that you're joining with us tonight. And just again, introduce my team. And before I do that, I just want to say a big thank you to Jeff for putting together that awesome timer. Go, Jeff. Yes. And for Dan, who played the music. Isn't that amazing? Woo. Go, Dan. <laughs> So Ling and I are like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. That's so amazing. So awesome. Welcome, everyone. Great to see you on here. So wonderful. All right. So team, can you just tell me your name, where you're from, anything else you feel like saying? Jeff? Yeah, I'm Jeff. I'm from the UK. I met Heather when she was here earlier in the year. And yeah, I love doing this. Enjoy it. Really happy to be here. Awesome. Ling? <coughs> Sorry. Hi, morning. I'm Ling here from Singapore, now in San Francisco. Um, yeah, just doing a, having a great time and just enjoying this time of just uh, encouraging anyone who wants to come on board. God is good. Bless you. Awesome. And Dan? Dan, uh, USA. I'm in Redding, California. The weather is really nice. It's hot. Not too cool. humid. It's yeah. cool here in SF. It's cool there. It's a couple <laughs> hours away. But yeah, we've been doing this for weeks. Uh, make sure to check out the other things we have uh, coming up August 8th. Just a shout out mm -hmm. with uh, Lee Woodward and Heather Nichols. And then Ling has, um, has things from time to time, if you guys will see that. And personally, thank you, Jeff, for putting my song on there. So uh, it's a great song. I was encouraged by Heather in this group. I was encouraged by Heather, and then he helped make that happen because I've been sending <laughs> song. So just encouragement to everybody. You know, you have creative gifts. You know, share them. Share them with friends. Mm -hmm. Encourage them. So It's so true. I love this. is like a big team effort, you know? Like, I couldn't have done it by myself, and then Jeff helps, and then Dan, and Lane's going to do admin today. International so. team. It really <laughs> is. There are no limits. No limits. That's so cool. I love it. All right, guys. So as you know, we are so excited to be here with Holy oh, Spirit. Gosh. The Holy Spirit is amazing. He loves speaking to his people. And friends, I will tell you this. If you are watching right now, I would love for you to take a big risk. Ask Holy Spirit if he has a word for somebody else you see that's been commenting on here or one of the team um and give them a word ask them holy spirit what are you saying and maybe for some of you you're used to receiving more than giving but go ahead like try it out this is a safe place really don't worry i'm watching everything so it's a safe place to practice so i encourage you to practice because the best thing is when we can be a blessing for others right it's so much fun so and you might be really encouraged that what you hear from the lord is actually could be more accurate than you could imagine and also that um uh and god can really speak through you so definitely please 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 practice with each other here oh <laughs> i love this is wendy i met her in the uk hi wendy <laughs> i love it she guys she makes amazing cakes there's a whole other prophetic thing about that her making cakes so it's just so incredible and let me just give a few shout outs here saying hello to people Hi, Carmen, Tony. Hi, Tony. Uh, Stephanie and Joshua, Sarah, Giselle. Oh, gosh, I hope I said your name right. Ah, hi from South Africa. Um, Crystal, Radiance, nice to see you again as well. Elsa, Yolisa, and Wendy. Yay! And anyone else that might be watching that I haven't seen your comments. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Yes, yeah, so if you'd like a word, please do comment, obviously, and team. If you can also write in the chat who you might have a word for, that's also super helpful. <laughs> awesome. Very cool. All right. So I actually want to start by giving a word to Carmen here. Um, here we go. So Carmen, I just saw a picture of a horse. And I'm actually reminded of the story Black Beauty. And I don't know the story super well. But I'm rem reminded of another story where... Um, that's similar to Black Beauty, maybe, but it's because I can't remember the actual story of Black Beauty. But Black Beauty was this horse in this other story where it used to be a racehorse, and then it got to go live on a farm and be totally free. And I feel like God is really taking you into a new area of freedom. 
And I don't know tons about horses, but every time I get pictures, like prophetic pictures with horses, I often see like open fields, like where the corral is being opened up and the horse is like able to be out and free. And so I feel like God is saying it's time to get your wild on. Uh, I feel like it's time to, um, yeah, I just, I feel like maybe in the past someone has maybe tried to like kind of break your spirit, you know, or like try to keep things down. But I feel like the father is saying, you are in a season of, of restoration and God has made you wild at heart. And as you go after the things that really make your heart come alive, you're going to see yourself come and enter into the fullness of who God created you to be, into your destiny, into a whole lot of freedom. So go and be your wild self that God made you to be um, because you're going to see just new freedom when you step into that. So blessings to you, Carmen. And thanks for your kind words as well. <laughs> awesome. All right, let's see. Team, anyone ready with someone? Oh, I didn't see. Did someone raise their hand or no? Can't tell. <laughs> I wanted to Debbie Huxton. Are you, are you here, Debbie? So, Debbie, I, I, I think of like the, uh, the, well, it's lagging. Hang on a second. And hi, Debbie from GB, Great Britain. Is that right? I yes, so. Debbie is my friend. Hi, Debbie. Okay. Good to see you. Wait. Yeah. Hey, I just had a little bit of lag. Just give me a second there. It's, it was choppy. So, um, no problem. I, I saw um, the hostess, you know, you know those cupcakes, the, the hostess with the white little lines on the top of the cupcakes, Debbie Huxton. And, um, but the, it felt like it was like the word you get or, or um, that you share or like sweet desserts some way, like scrolls in heaven where they are made of honey and they eat them and they have value, but they're eating the word so they can take it down. But then I saw these white lines in a shirt, like a design pattern where they button up and a coat. And I feel like you button together things in hope and purity that carry on people. And it's like a gray jacket. And I feel like you've been a retailer of wisdom in the sense of, you're sharing wisdom and it's very presentable and the patterns at which you share and say things draws attention to the wisdom that covers people, that there's a sweet nature in the way you speak to people and you're appreciated and loved by God, but people come to realize they're covered in love by God. And that, that's, that's a very gifted thing to share something in gentle and kindness, very powerfully, even, even in strong words, sometimes that'll cover people. Um, wide range, a wide variety of uh, applications and the wisdom God is using through you and to keep going. I feel like he's taking these coats off the rack and you're handing them to people. That's a season of your words have come together. And now that over the years you've had seasons of almost like styles of clothes that have names on them. There's brands and movements you've been a part of or are, are um, things that you know, but you participated, certified in and you're handing them out. You're handing out these coats of many colors. You're handing out gray coats, purple coats, red coats, you know, royal coats, coats that speak in the wisdom and communion. And I feel like you have like this array on a um, coat rack and it's kind of like coats are on there that you just share with people. And they're things from God that you've helped people realize their callings and their um, coverings that God has put upon them to share with other people and to protect themselves and their families. So that's the word I have for you, Debbie. Bless you. Mm, great. Very good. All right, Jeff, you have a word for Radiance? Yeah, Radiance. And um, when I saw your name, I, I, I know this is going to sound really cheesy, but I just felt heat. Um, I'm echoing it, it right. So I, I just felt heat. Um, and I was like, what, what does that mean? And I, I don't know if you've been, um, so you've written cool as well, actually, funny enough. But I, do, I don't know if you've been having um, issues and, and that's sort of um, like some situations that I've been going through, we just feel like it's been attack after attack after attack. And I, and I just feel like if, if that's been the heat of the enemy, then um, there's good news. There's good news. There really is good news. The enemy's been beaten already. You know that. I know that. But sometimes there's times when you don't feel like that. But I'm just telling you now, you do come out the other side. I don't know if this is relevant to you right now, but what i feel the scripture i've got is isaiah 54 and it's talking about the future glory of zion and what's going to come um 
and it talks, uh, I'm not going to read all of it about, and it talks about a barren woman who has bore a child, but then she does come into labour in time. Um, but in verse two, it says about enlarging your tent, enlarge your place of tent, stretch out your tent curtains wide, do not hold back, lengthen your cords. And it talks about not being, not being shamed, not being humiliated. No, I think it speaks to a lot more people than just radiance, actually. I'm speaking to, to about myself as well, actually. It says, do not be afraid, you will not suffer shame. Do not fear disgrace, you will not be humiliated. And it goes on and on, and it, it's just such a brilliant chapter. So please read that in your own time. It says, Isaiah 54. Um, because your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all of the earth, despite what's going on. He is still God. He is, I think that's, that's that's the title that I'm seeing right now. He is still God. Despite what's going on, I'm feeling it for myself right now. I'm feeling some real heat as I'm talking. He is still God, whatever's going on. So just, just please take that. Bless you. There's good to come. There is great to come. Awesome. <clears throat> Very cool, Jeff. Um, okay, really quick here. So we have a new team member joining us for the first time. Hello, welcome, Dean. Hi, guys. Hello, Dean. Great to see you. Can you tell us where you're coming from? <laughs> I'm coming from South Africa in Cape Town. Great to be here, guys. So excited. Very cool. We're excited to have you. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, I know. It's, I love a small world. Just like. <laughs> so funny. Heather, you want um, to explain to Dean how to do this? Right. Well, I've sent some information already, but okay, um, I will say that. Yeah. So, Dean, do you see the. Okay, you see the private chat. Okay, cool. So, can you see all the names that Ling has listed on there? Or does she um, need to repost them? I don't. Can you scroll up, or there's no place I to scroll yet? I, I can. Yeah. I can repost it. I can repost it. Oh, I think. Yeah, Dean, you can see the names? Yeah. Okay, so Ling, you don't have to repost it. He can see it. Okay. Um, but we have done a couple of names, but anyway. <laughs> there's wow, a list of names. Pick the, one. <laughs> yeah, so you'll just want to um, look for a name that really stands out to you, and then you can write it in the private chat that you have a word for that person, and then I try to, like, roll us through that together. So. Okay, and then I, I see the people in the comments section. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so, but also Ling is writing all the names in the private chat, so you don't have to really pay too much attention to the Facebook unless you okay. want to. Okay. Yeah, especially, especially for the first time. <laughs> I know. Hi, Jean Alexander. Great to see you on YouTube. Lauren, Jan, Denise, I think. Hello, hello. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Um, yes, we're going to do our best here to get to as many names as possible. Um, just know, though, like we might not have to get to all of them, but we'll do our best, okay? And also our friend here, Jiva from Kuwait, is joining us and been writing some words. So go, Jiva. That is so awesome. Very cool. All right. Okay, so Dean, do you have any more questions? Are you okay? I'm, I'm good. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Cool. If you have any more questions, just write in the private chat and we'll... All right. I just posted the new names in the private chat, so you guys can just look at the names there. Perfect. Perfect. Is anyone ready with one? Where are you going? Get my little setup going. All right. I got Esther. Do I need to type the name out? Just go for it. Okay. You yeah. You, tell you, me. I, I mean, I... Uh, I, I, if I'm if I'm free now, I can I can I can get it. So I can go on. I got a bake Do you word for Esther? Yeah, Esther uh, and Josh Lamb. That's such a great name. Um, uh, when I was in high school, we had our crusader uh, guy on a horse on our football team, and his last name was Lamb. And it's like the knight and the lamb, like the lion and the lamb, like your name. I feel like you guys are a team. And um, I, I don't sound silly like the horse in the night, but like a horse is like a vision or a mission per se, metaphorically speaking. And the night, you know, represents, we got the armor of God and you got this long lance. And I feel like 
Esther, that you've had this long lapse and that you intercede and it reaches out. There's an extent people can see, but then wisdom can reach out and touch people. It kind of reaches out and it touches the ground. It like you speak it, but the faith puts it and applies it and it becomes local. And um, a lot of intercession is actually local, even though it's into the realm, it's back into the local. And um, just to encourage you, like the book of Daniel, he prophesies and it goes out there, but it's where he's at. And the Lord hears your prayers when you speak and it lands locally. And you and your husband are like the knight and horse combo. One carries the other. And it's like um, one becomes the horse, one becomes the knight. And I really feel like you guys carry that honor, um, that wisdom that uh, that you need. And it, uh, you intercede and you're intermediate for people. In a court system, you have a judge and lawyers. And they're kind of based on the round table where a king and knights would. Because uh, in a court, a lawyer has like some kind of connection to the judge. And uh, they can have special rights. Like they can call and not be there. They can do certain things. They talk in a different way. I feel like you have a real favor with God that you talk and inter intercede for people that don't think they can speak to God. But you you encourage well. And I encourage you that when you speak, they realize that they have value in this kingdom, in God's kingdom. And I feel like you and your husband do really well at serving people, the poor, to realize how priceless they are. And that message is having effect. And I just want to encourage you because I really hear that past emotion or facial expression, the words are reaching who you're trying to speak. They're, they're reaching. And uh, even to the point some people might be arguing, arguing with you, like, like a kid in a class kind of doesn't want to do it. It's, it's still making impact. When they lay their head, there is an intercession that's happening and covering people that's valued from you. Like a, like a knight, you roam the land. I feel like you and your husband are kind of like circuit riders and you're sharing the word in your community and going places together. You're bringing the home of God into homes. And I feel like you're taking the peace of God and covering people very well. And then to encourage you and Mr. Lamb, Joshua, that's a great name, Joshua Lamb. So I'm going to kind of just jump into Joshua real quick because got to move along here. Uh, Joshua, I feel like you and Joshua are a friend of God that has served well under others and that you serve well with others and that you serve together and you guys are an example of faith and encouragers to those around you, even in the small things. Some people will overlook in the kingdom dynamic and they'll think this is important, but this, this very powerful small things even are very important. Things that are happening in your home, your business, at the bus stop. These are very real things that you guys are sharing and are examples of faith. The way you guys shop groceries together, that's what I hear. So you guys are very uh, encouraging. You guys are royalty. You guys carry honor very well and keep doing what you're doing. And God trusts you. And to be encouraged in your faith that you hear well and share well. So bless you, Mr. and Mrs. Lamb. Awesome. Very cool. All right. So, Jeff, can you hold on to that word for a minute? Yeah. Because um, that friend is having problems with her phone right now. So maybe she can get back on soon. Yeah. And Jiva also just posted a word for Joshua. So check that out. That is so cool. And yeah, look at that. That's so awesome. <laughs> I love it when there's confirmations. Praise the Lord. That's so good. All right. Anyone else? We're going to hang on to Giselle for a little bit. Anyone else ready with the word? Okay, if you're not, just one to ask. <laughs> um, all right. So I actually want to do Jean Alexander. Um, hold on. Let me find the name super quick. So Jean Alexander. Um, here we go. There it is. All right, so I'm reminded of this very old, you can find this YouTube clip. It's by Louis Giglio and it's called Jeans, Jeans and Jeans or something like, it's all about jeans. Um, but talks about how like, uh, how like if, if you're Christian, you know, sometimes people are Christian and then they make jeans like the fish symbol or the cross or whatever. But basically what Louis Giglio was saying was like, what you need to do is you need to go get trained. If you love jeans, Go get trained, get the best training you training you can, you know, do whatever you feel like God is telling you to do, but then take part of that money and go give it to missionaries in Papua New Guinea 
And then when you're in heaven one day, those people are going to come up to you and say, hey, I'm in heaven because of you, all because you did fashionable jeans, okay? So do you know, Alexander, I feel like God, and actually even the word Alexander is reminding me of these like, you know, I don't know them very well, but in history class, Alexander was always a very royal, very prominent, very, um, you know, person in, um, you know, like, what do you call those people who led, like, they were commanders. And I just feel like God, like Gene Alexander, God is giving you the ability to almost like command people, not necessarily in a negative way, but just in a way that could reproduce big things. Uh, just like the gene thing, you know, if you have this idea, you can actually see it multiplied to a greater ability. Like I feel like God has given you a big capacity. And so I just feel like the Lord is saying to go do what it is that God has put in your heart to do. It may not be Christian per se, but I feel like God is saying, go after those things because you take part of what you get from that and you put it into the kingdom, you know, and God wants to bless the creative ideas that he's given you. And I do feel like, I don't know, I, I see like business and finance and economics on your life. So I don't know what you do. I don't know who you are really. I don't think, I hope I'm not sure that I do, <laughs> but anyway, um, but I just bless you with that. I feel like God is saying, go do what your heart is desired to do because as you do that and you do it with a lot of people it's gonna the resources are gonna go farther than you can imagine and people will even come into the kingdom because of it so i'm gonna bless you with that gene alexander awesome very cool okay yes that's great yeah look at that uh joshua just confirmed that yay thank you jesus mimi's cheering because that was so good great job dan very awesome all right and Dean, you have a word for Lauren. Go ahead. Yeah, great. Well, Lauren, I, I don't know you um, <laughs> at all, <laughs> but this is <laughs> really That's great. That's fun of it. <laughs> yeah, really. So, Lauren, I just feel like uh, God is going to fast track you. Uh, I get, um, I just see train tracks, and and God just really catapulting you forward. Uh, I'm, I'm not really um, sure of the context, but I just see uh, a lot of fast movement and momentum. And I feel like um, a lot of it is because of your, your faithfulness and your, your ability to press into God. And I feel like there is a, a multiplication coming and a, um, a thrusting forward. Uh, I see you going at, at like, like uh, new speeds, uh, new new acceleration and um, yeah there you are great and uh, I see I just see like an excellence on your life I'm not sure if you've got like an administrative gift on your life as well a gift of helps uh, which is such a spiritual gift um, and I see that God really just thrusting you forward and then there's a spirit of excellence on you and I just bless you with that. And, and we just say more, more, more God, more Holy Spirit, more spirit of excellence, more acceleration, more thrusting forward in Jesus' name. Very good. Yeah. yeah, and Lauren, I just want to add to that. It's actually funny. I just now see that you did a purple heart, but I didn't see that. And I was just looking at your picture and I just saw a purple flower, like a purple daisy. And I feel like you're just really purple for me always represents like royalty and identity and i feel like you just like you're so secure you like know who you are you know what god has called you to do you know where you're going in life but i feel like um in all that like i see the green stem to the flower and i just feel like you're in a season of exponential growth like you're just gonna grow even more into that and i see other people coming like almost like I don't know, you know, like at the water park, there are these water parks with those flowers, like the kiddie pools, and there's water kind of coming out of the flowers or the mushrooms or whatever they are. But I see like this purple flower and I see other people coming under you and actually um, just being covered. And they're actually able to be in a safe place to grow into their identity and what God has called them to be. And um, I don't necessarily like prophesying this because a lot of times like people prophesy like you're a woman, so you're going to minister to women. Like that's not always true clearly, but in your case, I do see that. Like I see you actually helping a lot of women. <laughs> so I don't want to just assume something, but I do feel like you are going to be helping a lot of like young women. Like I see like uh, preteen, I see especially teenagers into like early like college age, and I just see you really guiding them and just helping them to grow into what God has called them to be. And I feel like 
there's that scripture in the beginning of Psalms about the strong oak that's planted by the river and the water. That is you. Like, and others are going to be drawn to that place of rest, restfulness to be able to step into who they are um, because of who you are. Yeah, so awesome. Okay, I've been ministry of wounds. Okay, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, yeah, so, and also it was a purple daisy. And so I always see like, you know, that where it's like the daisy where it's like, he loves me. And people always say he loves me not, but see with Jesus, he loves me, he loves me, he loves me, he loves me, he loves me. And you're in a whole field of these daisies. So what, Dan? Crazy, look at it's been a I know that's amazing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so cool. Well, blessings to you. Blessings to you, Lauren. That's so great. Oh, good. Yay. I love the other people cheering on. Hey, Doreen. <laughs> I can see you on here. That's so awesome. Very cool. Praise the Lord. Mm. All right. Let's see. Who else? Anyone else ready? Dun, dun, dun. I'm like checking the list again, friends. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. I will take uh, it tells E T H Ether Ethel. Ethel. I mean Ethel. Ethel's husband. Oh, Alice, I think, or Al Alice. A L E S. Here we go. We got it. This one. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Ethel. Um, well, Alice, I just saw you. I just saw your husband riding on, like he's like he's riding on the waves. It's like he's surfing. He's surfing on the waves, and he's surfing very, uh, he's surfing very smoothly and very efficiently. And he's not. And as he surf, he gains momentum. And therefore, I sense that he is. You know, uh, I don't know what your husband is going through, but God is with you. God is with him. God is with Alice. And as he, even as he surfed those waves, he'll be protected. The waves. I saw him surfing very, um, um, really gliding on very well and is able to escape every wave that comes over him. I just bless him that you know, be assured that the Holy Spirit is surfing with you, that he's propelling you and he's gliding you and guiding you through the waves. You will not be overcome by it. You will not be crashed by it because there's such a covering over you. It's almost like when you surf through the, the big waves, it's almost like you've been protected. So I just bless you that you be, you'll just glide through and the Holy Spirit will be guiding you through it as well. Great. Very cool. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Ethel, let's see. Um, Dan, you have a word for Doreen. Doreen Morehouse. Uh, there's a middle name. Um, hello, Doreen, you here? A mariner, yeah. Yes. Hey, I, I feel like, uh, Doreen, I, the word I got for you was that you have the ear of the king and that you um, you stand up for what's important and you promote other people and kind causes. And uh, I got verses for 72, Psalm 72, 4 through 7. May the king stand up for those who are hurting. May he save the children of those who are in need. May he crush those who treat others badly. May the king rule as long as the sun shines and the moon gives its light. May he rule for all time to come. May he be like rain falling on the fields. May he be like showers watering the earth. May godly people do well as long as he rules. May they have more than they need as long as the moon lasts. And I feel like the word is that you've been carrying on um, encouragement and you have an authority stamped on it. It's like um, if you have a business and you were to have a product and it comes into season and you've been investing a long time, I feel just like that. Whatever you've been promoting is trademarked by God. And then you have a stamp of approval and those verses in, in Psalm 72, four through seven are to encourage you that a moon a lot of times is for a season or a fortnight. And so as you enter into a, a, a phase that goes on in the day, it's almost like there's a calling or a ministry or a profession that you're doing that is entered into that season. And I'm not talking about winter or May or, or, or fall in that sense, your day is ongoing, but you have this ongoing relationship for like children and people who, who need to be encouraged young in the faith and you're reaching out and you have the authority of the word backing you and your causes and the creative abilities are also covered in a promise that, that like as the moon keeps doing, as he keeps doing, as light keeps doing, the king is going to continue ruling in your life. And 
you, you have a stamp of approval and I don't know what you're due or, or what are you doing in real life, but you have a very creative thing about you. Um, but you have a very encouraging, um, real ambassador thing going on that is very charitable and is very giving and it's very, very, uh, proficient in speaking to people that can help mother Teresa. Everybody knows her work on the streets, but they don't realize how resilient she was at getting finances for her missions. She, she approached Pan Am years back and she got them to donate because she was persistent. And uh, I feel like your persistence is bringing justice. I mean, real justice. I, I'm not talking just a, a, a flash in the pan. Maybe it feels good to, you know, be involved. I'm talking about real change. And I feel like you're making real investments. And as long as God's reigning, these things are moving forward day and night. And I just feel like TikTok, they're just the, not, not the show or the watch, but I'm not talking about that, just the clock. He is continually moving and his words are in time. And I feel like just be encouraged that his words for you are on time and you have God's backing and blessing. And you're a an fine example of faith and true love of God. And you really encourage people well. Awesome. And Doreen was my instructor for the prophetic class I took with Global Awakening. <laughs> so she's definitely an ambassador. That's a good word. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, Jeff, you have a word for Giselle. Her internet is back. Yay. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Giselle, good. Welcome back. I've got this. You've been holding on to this a little sec a while, but. You need to really weigh this one up because uh, I'm not sure about this one. But when I saw your name, I got the picture of a bird. And I was like, what? what, what what's with the bird? And then it was, I got a picture of a gazelle as well. Because from your name, Giselle, you probably get this lots. Um, and I was like, well, how does this bird fit into this? And I was like, okay. So this is why you really got to weigh this one up because it starts off really bad. But it's, it ends good. Don't worry. So I saw, I saw this gazelle being chased by a pack of hyenas. Um, and it was running and it was running obviously for its life um, and these hy hyenas were like literally catching it up and this gazelle was like oh something really needs to happen because otherwise it's game over so the gazelle was running back to its its other family group of other animals for safety going back to its home should we say and then literally as these as these hyenas are clothes in in it was like almost a, a, a real cry to god of like god help me and as soon as that happened this gazelle just sprouted wings and this wing this the, the gazelle just as it was leaping jumping it literally just jumped and never touched the ground again and i was like wow this is amazing and as this thing went up the hyenas kept chasing still and as the gazelle went up it could see where it was going to its home with the other gazelles and but on the other side it could see a cliff face so instead of it actually carrying on home leading the hyenas to the rest of the pack that obviously would have caused issues the gazelle could see because it was now left the floor that there was actually a cliff face and actually turned direction and led the hyenas off the edge of this cliff face so they was completely obliterated and defeated um otherwise it would have been not just disaster for the gazelle but for the rest of the pack as well so this is really like why you've got to weigh this up because it's a bit strange but then as this gazelle turned round after the hyenas were obliterated it went back to the pack and they saw they saw the gazelle coming home flying in and and their faith just rose even just seeing that forget about once once you told them the story once you told them exactly what happened how how god came and how you sprouted wings how you could fly how your feet never touched the floor how you saw the bigger picture how god led you to get rid of that distraction and how it not only saved you but has actually made a difference to them the whole place changed the whole family field changed the whole um culture of that whole village and people of group that you helped even though you didn't know it at the time I'm just telling you, it's just complete relationship and change, and everyone was just so pleased and gave thanks to God. It was that obvious that only God could have done this. That's what I'm feeling for you right now, but obviously you really need to weigh that one up, but I'm telling you what I'm seeing. So just bless you with that, Giselle. Yeah, and let us know. Let us know, um, or you can private message me as well if you prefer. 
Uh, mm. But that'd be helpful to always know, especially when we take risks like that. We're like, was that a good risk? <laughs> <laughs> We're all learning here. So we love any kind of feedback. Thank you so much. Awesome. Ian, just to give you some, um, yeah, I hear Doreen. She loved that word. That is so cool. And I love it when other people also love it when they know the person. <laughs> So great. And I would show Ling hers, but I'll wait till she comes back. Oh, I was like, hope she's not down here in backstage. I didn't realize it. <laughs> awesome. All right. So great job. And then Dean, you have a word as well. Yeah, I've got a word and I'm going to say the name, um, but it's, it's, it's not a name that I'm, I'm maybe going to, I might not pronounce it correctly. Uh, oh, that's great. It's actually for Sarah. Uh-huh. Uh, the person, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Oh, so you put that up. <laughs> I thought yes. they came at the exact time that I was about to give them a word. Oh, so, that would be cool. But yeah, I was so encouraged. <laughs> take it, take it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you, Heather, the Holy Spirit. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, so I'm not sure if I'm saying the name right. Is it Sarah? I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pronounce it as Sarah, but apologies if it's not pronounced that way. But uh, Sarah, I saw that, um, and, I, and I'm not sure if, yeah, okay, great. Sarah, I, I saw you uh, have possibly gone through a season where uh, the, the direction, you questioned uh, the right direction and the journey. Um, and, uh, and I'm not, not sure of the details around that, but um, I feel like it's been a, a kind of a season of, well, do I go here? Do I go there? Do I move? Do I stay? Just a, a lot of questions. And I feel the Lord just really encouraging you and saying that um, he's really been coaching you through that season. And uh, I see that verse, Isaiah 22, 22, 22, which uh, is such a popular verse, but uh, I'm just going to quote it. You know, uh, I'll place on, on her the keys to the house of David. What she shuts, no one can open, and what she opens, no one can shut. And I, I feel like the Lord has coached you in this season, uh, and he wants to give you the keys to times and seasons. And that's yeah. your understanding of how the ways of God operate and the heartbeat of God it's a plug for Heather's uh, uh, ministry. Um, the, the heart <laughs> of God uh, operates. Uh, you're really going to be able to also coach other people uh, about times and seasons. Um, and, and I kind of feel that you really got a sensitivity towards people as well. And that that is going to be such an important dynamic in understanding choices and and direction and that sort of thing uh, and your sensitivity towards people your self-awareness people awareness or emotional intelligence all those dynamics and the heartbeat of god and how that all plays into understanding our journey and other people's journeys and directions and all of that sort of thing so i see you as like a, as a strategist as a as a planner for people and you're really having the mind of christ for people uh, so yeah, that's. I hope that blesses you. And let me know. Let me know if that's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Very cool. Actually, I will tag her. I don't know if she's commenting right now, but I will tag her just so she knows that we just gave that. In case I try to tag people at the beginning, but anyway, uh, if not, maybe she'll do it later. Um, and also, Ling, you're back. So I just wanted to point this out. Ethel is very encouraged. So we just, any any family members, both Ethel's husband and anyone else who has family members who are not saved right now, we just we just uh, bind them to the cross of Jesus Christ. We just declare there's Jesus speaks a better word and we hold on to the word of Jesus. Jesus is the word, he's the bread of life. And we just speak salvation over every single family member that needs to be saved right now in Jesus name and Lord, I always pray this prayer when I, I said this to someone recently, they didn't know it was legal, but I was like, look, I just pray that they're uncomfortable until they come to Jesus. <laughs> like, seriously, I have no problem with that prayer because the fact is you're not going to be comfortable until you come to Jesus anyway. <laughs> so you will be much better off after you do. So we just released salvation over your husband, Ethel, but just to encourage you, Ling, as well. That was very cool. Uh, and like, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, Did you, you talking about Ethel just now? Yeah. Okay. Ethel just now. Ethel, I just suddenly saw 
so 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 you like Eiffel Tower, at all. I just saw like you like this Eiffel Tower, and that you are like the Eiffel Tower. That you are strong. You you stand tall. You stand solid like Eiffel Tower, and therefore I just encourage you to stand strong and stand uh, and stand strong and rooted. That you, that you are immovable, and and God will bring you, and God will just use you, you know, to to be that beacon of light, to be that revival. Revivalist for your family and for the community, and everybody will look at just like the Eiffel Tower is such a beautiful, uh, a magnificent, solid structure. That's who you are in the spirit. You know, God sees you as a magnificent. He He loves you. He loves the intricacy of you. He made you with such intricacy. And ever you are like that beautiful, magnificent, very intricate uh, Eiffel Tower. You have been there. You know, you've been so awed by it. I've been there myself. So I just bless you that you stay strong and rooted. That God sees so much value in you. That He He made you. He created you with such talents. Such He molds you. It's almost like He weave you. Uh, your different talents and your personalities to become a beautiful, uh, to become a beautiful masterpiece of Him. So, so hang on, know that you are solid, you are strong, and you're beautiful. You're intricately and beautifully made. Awesome, awesome, very cool. And also, we totally agree with that. May God turn their stone hearts to flesh. In Jesus' name, Amen. Come on, so good. Yes, and Amen for real. <clears throat> awesome and let's see so i have a word here for janice i think it's at the beginning hold on dun, dun, dun. sorry i have to scroll through there it is all right so janice um so your last part of your name the c-e-n well it's not really an n but i can't remember what that's called anyway but <laughs> it reminded me of the word scent like a penny and I feel like God is saying, like, there's so many things I feel like he's saying right now about this. One, I feel like he's saying that your two cents matters, okay? So, like, what you say, it actually does matter. And also, like, sometimes we can think, oh, one penny doesn't matter. But, in fact, like, a penny is worth something. It still has value. And you add a lot of pennies together, and it has a lot of value. You know, it can, it can buy you an ice cream cone. It can buy you something. And I just feel like God is saying, like, uh, he just wants to encourage you that what you say and your thoughts actually they they matter. They make they um they make sense. They uh people are gonna be encouraged, people are gonna be grow into a new like being they're gonna step into more of who they are because of what you like how you see them. So I feel like God wants to encourage you, even if it's just a sentence or a phrase, to just start activating that actually to start saying hey like if you're at the grocery store like you have a beautiful smile i know that might be hard to see now with masks but you know what i mean like just say those little things because that little thing that you said it has value and it matters and i'm reminded of this quick little story when i was in the bahamas um i was working on a cruise ship and our cruise ship stopped in the bahamas and i went into the shop and you know there were tons of little touristy shops but there's this little touristy shop that had a ton of things in it, like tons of souvenirs. And I heard worship music and I was like, ooh, this is awesome. Like clearly these people love Jesus. So I went up to the lady who was at the cashier register and I go, and I, I just did something that my friend in Reading, his name is Steve, he would pick up pennies because everywhere he went, he would see a penny and he would pick up a penny because it reminded him that God, um, that God was like going to take care of his financial needs, but also that God is reminding he's, he goes after the one, you know? So he also sees it as salvation, like the lost sheep, you know? So he's reminded when he sees pennies. So everywhere he goes, he sees pennies. Okay. So I go in the shop and I, and I grab some change out of my pocket and there was a penny. So I talked to this owner and I said, Hey, like, I just want to let you know, like, I'm just want to put this penny here just to like declare, make a declaration. I mean, they don't know me at all. But I'm like, I just want to declare that Jesus is going to bless your shop and he's going to bless you because like with this penny, not just with the penny, but just a representation. And this lady starts freaking out because apparently she had been picking up pennies for two or three years and had no idea why she was picking this up. And actually, I have a little YouTube clip on it. She did a little video for me. 
But she was like, oh my goodness. So literally I walk in her shop one day and I explain what the pennies mean. And she was blown away because she'd been picking up pennies for three years and she had no idea what God was trying to say to her. And I just walked up there and explained what God was saying to her. And wow. she was amazed by that. And I just want to say to you right now, and anyone else that needs that word, that your two cents matters, <laughs> okay? There is value to what you say. It might seem little to you, but it is a seed in the kingdom of God, and that little seed could grow up. And like, oh, there's that quote. Oh, it's on my other thing. But it's a quote where it says, like, um, as in each seed, like, okay, I'm messing up the quote, but it's something like each seed can grow a thousand, like one acorn seed can grow a thousand forests, okay? That's what's inside of it. So you have no idea what that one phrase or that one word could mean to someone else that, that could grow them into a whole lot more that they never knew because of the one thing you said. So know that your two cents matters, okay? And anyone else that needs that, blessings. Uh, yes, I just want to add for Janice. Uh, mm. I, she's my friend, actually. I just got to know her recently. Hi, Janice, good to see you here. Although I can't really see you, except your picture. <laughs> uh, but Janice, I'm not too sure. Uh, no, there's this chili called chili party in a in Southeast Asia. I'm not too sure it's in the Philippines. No chili party. Chili party is means a very small chili, but it's really powerful. It's really strong. It's stronger than all jalapeno. It's stronger than even the regular bigger chili. And I just see you, uh, Janice. And happen I noticed you got a red heart, but I saw like a chili party, a red chili party, and that's who you are. That uh, you know. That God wants you to know that you are powerful. You are that small, tiny chili, but it causes a warm effect. It's a, it's a huge impact. Anyone, anyone who has eaten chili chili party will know that one tiny, just one piece can send them to the roof. And that's who you are, Janice. You carry so much power. You are do not discount yourself because you are so valuable. You carry so much in you. You are warm. You create that warm effect that powerful impact, you know, like, like someone who has eaten the chili, they'll send them up the roof. That's who you are, Janice. You are, you are chili party. Awesome. Great. All right, Jeff, you have a word for Clorinda. Yeah, Clorinda. When I saw your name, Clorinda C, I'll make her in again. Clorinda, um, I saw your name, I saw gold. I just saw gold. Oh, I didn't even see you. And then you're wearing a top that almost looks gold. And the thing that came to me was Psalm 1910. And I'm telling you, this is your, like, get, get this T-shirt printed because this is, this is it. This is it. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. That was it. Verse 10, right? Um, they are sweeter than honey. Than honey from the comb, right? And I'm just thinking, like, like, just God is just declaring His love, how precious you are, mm. how important you are, comparing you to other things, and then some as well. Yeah, not just honey, but honey from the comb. You know, precious gold, not just gold that's abandoned. You know, it's been refined, it's been looked after, it's been purified, it's been made into something that makes that adds even more value to it. So rather than just the raw product that you could dig out of the ground, it's actually been transformed into what it should be. The beauty, the value is increased, yeah? So I just felt like God was just saying like, you know when you, like people apply law to things and it just turns things bitter. None of that, this is actually turning things sweet. Removing all of the rubbish that the world puts on and making things much better, much nicer increase value beauty and his love for you is just immense wow yeah yes. <laughs> i don't know how to end that one i just ended him well sorry but yeah just that psalm 19 verse 10 for you so, so good. good dean do you know clarinda yeah yeah very well all right <laughs> I was like, I didn't know. I mean, I met Clarita. She came to God Adventure one time, so okay. in South Africa. So I was wondering because I knew there's that connection. So yeah. Yeah, it's a great word, Yeah, absolutely spot awesome. on. Right? Cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, she's gold. Right. Oh, that is so right on. Absolutely, absolutely, very cool. Dan, you have a word? Yeah, Jiva, you hear Jiva? Uh, Rao. Uh, yes. 
You're here, Jiva. Hey, probably. So, what I got for you, Jiva, if you're here, is Isaiah. I'm gonna start with Isaiah 21 9. There, she's sharing a word right there. There, look at that. She's already in it. So good. Jiva, you're an encourager as those words are being posted up. You already posted those. Um, I want to say this you are an encourager and you carry the light well to other people. And I have a word for a uh, quick verse for you uh, Isaiah 21 9. Look, here comes the man in a chariot. It's being pulled by a team of horses. He's calling out the news. Babylon has fallen. It's fallen. All the statues of its gods like broken in pieces on the ground. And I feel like you have an encouraging voice that removes the chaos in people's life. And it is destroying the works of the devil in other people's life. And I just, I heard uh, the song, uh, Roar of the Lion of Judah by uh, Alberto and Kimberly Rivera. I did post a link in here, but it's like a nine minute song. And it's really cool because uh, they, the, the other singer is someone from England named Finch, but it's a really cool song about the Lion of Judah. And I feel like you really carry that Lion of Judah, loving charity, sort of Aslan from Narnia, that big lion that loves on those people. Remember, he calls out and he loves on them and he calls them into their identity to be kings and queens. Remember that they were their royalty he calls out their character and he helps them along their journey so they can grow up. And so Narnia, the lion, who's Jesus, you know, Aslan has all authority. And I think you do very well at loving people and spreading the gospel and calling forth the the authority, sort of like the chariots of fire for, for Elijah. Also, chariots of fire is a movie that what about the uh, Mr. Little that went to China about being an Olympic Olympian. It's a great movie. It's from back in the day when I was a kid. Chariots of fire has a cool song theme, but when he's running, his heart is all into it. I feel like your heart is all into it. And you're like chariots of fire. God's authority is with us. He loves us. He has peace. And you have a real stable and peaceful attitude about you that encourages others. It's not just frantic. You're not frantic. And that is amazing because people can get excited, but they need stability. And I feel like you really carry that peace and your words have stability to remind them that things are going to pass, that hardships are not forever. And I feel like as Babylon falls, you're calling out the glory of God and victory and it's removing the destruction and bad things around in people's lives with the words you share and your character and your, uh, your witness the who you are every day. So bless you, Jiva. Thank you for sharing your words. I'm glad you're part of the team and, uh, and be encouraged today. Awesome. Very cool. All right. Dean, you have a word? Yeah, for Gina, Gina Davidson. And Gina, I really feel uh, I feel like a wild adventure ahead of you. And I feel uh, Jesus <laughs> taking you on a wild adventure uh, ahead, like just just almost like um, almost like an unplanned, spontaneous, uh, cast your cares off and just dive in kind of adventure with Jesus uh, being led by the Holy Spirit. And uh, I feel like it's it's also building trust in your relationship. Uh, I feel like, you know, we, we can't always see the next step ahead of us. Uh, his word is a lamp unto our feet, which means, you know, we can only see a lamp. You can't see all the way. You can just see the next step. And I feel like that's part of the wild adventure. God just taking you step by step and uh, you really learning to to trust in that season and just really feeling the uh, the, the wild ad adventurous spirit of Jesus. You know, I think that I think that Jesus, when the disciples first met Jesus, they must have thought he was just such a wild adventurer. Uh, this 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 man who just kind of bust in on their life, and I kind of feel like Jesus wants to take you on a similar kind of experience with him, at least for a season of just feeling like you're tracking with the heartbeat of 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 Jesus, the wild adventurer. So just just allow him to whisk you away. And just take you up and 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 explore new new things and just be swept up uh, in that experience. And you might not know exactly the next step, but that's part of the the, the exuberation of it. And I just want to add to that for you, Gina. Like I was just looking at your profile picture. I know it's very small, but I got Pocahontas. And, you know, she really was like went with the wind. And, you know, there's a point she even had to make a choice, like crossroads. 
but I feel like you're someone that just really uh, listens to the spirit. You're really led by the spirit. You really listen to the spirit. You move by the wind. Um, hey, Dean, that's so great. Look at that confirmation. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Love it. Very cool. Uh, but yeah, so Gina, I just believe that um, like God is like, you know, Smith Wigglesworth said um, it was at the whisper that he turned his ear to what God was saying. And I just I just really want to encourage you that you really listen to the whispers of the Holy Spirit and woo, and you can be expectant of big things, be expectant for big things. And I feel like it's just going to switch one day. Like, I feel like you're going to be going about your thing, doing your just doing ministry or whatever. But suddenly, like there's going to be bam, like that's like the biggest thing you've ever seen happen. And there's be one, then there'll be another one, then there'll be another one and continue on. So There'll be like, I feel like a sudden shift, a sudden turn, uh, turn around the river bend. <laughs> but as you just continue to listen and hear his voice, um, just keep following him and you're going to be amazed at what you're going to look back on your life and be like, wow, wasn't that amazing? So praise the Lord for that. I'm excited for you. <laughs> All Hi, right. Gina. Uh, oh, I just have forever, Gina. Gina, I just saw you like putting on a diving suit. And I just saw you plunging into the sea and diving. And as you dive, you recover. You recover the treasures in the sea. And I just think about that God is bringing you an adventure, that you are a diver. You are a diver who dives into the treasures of the Lord. And that's who you are. You are one who seeks and seeks and dives and, and recover the treasures of the Lord. And God has so much treasures for you to discover. He has so much mysteries for you in store for you. And I just bless you that you will just be that one who dives deep into the heart of God and dives deep into your one who dive deep into uh, recovering uh, and, and knowing the mysteries of the Lord. And he has so many wonderful mysteries for you, like Easter eggs, no, that you are that he's put there for you to, to find and, and discover. And, and to be awed by it all. Just bless you, Gina. Awesome. Um, so really quickly, one of our friends here is um, not feeling well. So she's not here, our group, but someone messaged me privately. So let's just pray for healing for that person. Hold on. I'm just going to message them to let them know in case they're watching. Uh, I just don't want to put the name up just for privacy purposes. But Jesus, we just pray for this person right now. We just speak to any uh, ir irregular irregularities in her body. We just command everything to come into alignment right now. Anything that feels out of alignment, we just break that in the name of Jesus. So we just command shalom. Shalom means to break the authority of chaos and release abundant peace. So we just speak shalom over your body right now, from the top of your head to the tip of your toes, and for every organ and body function to come into alignment with heaven. Now we cover you in the blood of Jesus and any assignment the enemy is having, we just break that in Jesus' name. So we just cover you and bless you right now. All right. Yes. Okay. And who was sorry, um, um, um Jeff. Who was after? <laughs> Jeff. Jeff, go Jeff. Yeah, I've got a word for it. is it Kiana? Is that how you pronounce okay, it? Okay, yeah. Kiana. I'm sorry if I've said your name wrong. But um I, as soon as I saw your first name, I, I got refreshing. That was it. Just like drink, water, refreshing, shower. Um, and probably, I don't know, I'm probably going to show my age now. Probably about 20 odd years ago, we had a, a season of a Holy Spirit wave where we called it Times of Refreshing. Um, I don't know if you're aware of that. But anyway, basically, it was the first movement of the Holy Spirit that I experienced for myself. And it was just amazing time. Um, and people were just doing crazy things as Holy Spirit does. And um, but there was some amazing prophetic words and some amazing ministries come out of that. But people were just like so blessed by it. And I just feel this is this is your time now for your own personal refreshing over you. Um, and, I, and I feel it's, it's, it's a time, it's a season of, of complete life, just, just absolute enjoying it, enjoying it, fun, joy. I'm you know, I can never do joy over a computer, but I just feel like releasing joy over you right now, this whole refreshing thing. And as it comes over you, it just it absolutely soaks you and drenches you. But only, not only that, it just bounces off of you and droplets fly off. 
and touch others around you. And, and where we are in the UK, I don't know where you're from, there's a company called Robinson and they make squash drinks, yeah? Um, and you mix them mm. with water. And, and I've just got my plain water and I just felt like, as God just adds, adds to you, it just, it just like, it becomes a different flavour. It, it's not that you've changed the word, but there's something that you add to it that makes it specific for that person. So it's come to you, and as it as it rebounds and bounces off of you, it touches whoever. So whether it's orange flavour for that person, or black currant for that person, or just whatever it is, different sweetness, whatever it is that God gives you, just bounces off you and refreshes them as well. So I just I just want to release that over you now, Kiana. Awesome, awesome! Praise the Lord. All right, and okay. Dan, you have a quick word for Tony? Hey, Tony. I saw a banana peel back, and it opened, and then it became a canopy like at a picnic. It was spinning, and then it was it was something that people could eat under. It was like a, a canopy, like a picnic table. And I feel like when you delight yourself in the Lord and what you're doing, it peels, and it opens, and it covers like a canopy over a table, and that God is providing nutrients and in life for the people around you and the things that you are given to share and you're delighting yourself in. I see you encouraging other people to delight themselves in God. And I keep encouraging you because that is covering a place where people can sit and eat, where they can commune and have the food of the word. The, the encouragement encourages the word of God for them to eat themselves. And so keep doing what you're doing and, and you're a blessing. So just keep doing that because people are eating the word and they're getting the nutrients and they're encouraged by you and they're sitting at the table with Jesus and they're having communion. They're learning what the bread is, what the wine is and, and the uh, various ways it can be creative with people. It's, it's going on right now. I feel like it's a summertime season for you. Like literally spiritual summertime season where people are sitting. Sometimes a season of rest is like a picnic in a, in a, in a warm setting. So I feel like a season of rest where they're outside with the nature of God, sort of exploring, pondering, resting, enjoying it taking it in with God and uh, you're a light. So be encouraged. Awesome. Very cool. All right. And Ling, you have a word for Nancy? Yes. Uh, you're going okay. to pick her? You're going to attack What's her? That? You're going to attack her? Yes. Here we go. Okay. Hi, Nancy. Well, first of all, Nancy, I think you said this is your first time joining us. So welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us, Nancy. Nancy, I saw you. I, I just sense that you have a you have a searching heart. You I just sense that your heart is searching for, for him, for God. And he loves you. And I just felt that he's so full of love for you. I just felt I just sensed that presence of he's just watching over you, Nancy. And he saw and he, and he sees your searching heart. You know. He sees the times that you're searching for him and your hunger and you're hungry for him. And and I saw and I, and I saw you uh, uh and I saw the door open before you, like God opened a door, and I saw you dressed in this white white gown. And he opens the door before you and he asked and he invited you in. And, and inside the inside this hall in the house, there was a, a table full of good food. It was a feast that was set before you. And he's just inviting you to come in, dear. Come in, come in, Nancy. Come in, dear. And he's inviting you, darling Nancy, to come in and feast with him. It's almost like a banquet is being set up just for you. You do have to stand at the door. You are more than fit. You are more than welcome to enter into his into his feasting with him. I just felt like. No, don't not. Uh, he doesn't want you to stand at the door. He just he wants you to come in and feast with him. He wants you to come in and have that intimate conversation with him because he wants to like share a good meal and have a good chat and open his heart to you. And I just bless you that you are that your searching heart. He loves your searching heart and he wants to pour out into. You. He wants to pour so much into you. He wants to give you so much revelations, Nancy. And I just bless you, Nancy. Just bless your your heart of gold, a heart of just being almost like David, passionate and searching for him. Bless you. Awesome. Very cool. 
All right. And Dean, you have a word for Joshua? Yeah, Joshua. Uh, Joshua. Um, I, I just saw you as two things, Joshua, just as a, a worshiper, a presence soaked believer, uh, a, a one whose heart is completely devoted and, and in love with, with God. And then with that, I, I saw you as a, as a warrior, as a, as a fighter, as one who is, 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 um, who makes, makes war, who fights for the kingdom. And I just feel that there's those two sides to you and, and they are so beautifully put together. Uh, I just think of all the great men and women in, in the Bible and see how you know, time after time God had those two dynamics. If I think of David, he was a worshiper and a warrior. If I think of John the Baptist, you know, he was, he was one in the river and he was like a fearless preacher. If I think even of Joshua, your name, he was one who loved to just stay and linger in the presence. And then he was also the one who took down the walls of Jericho and went to the other side and marched and, and conquered. And, and just time and time again, God has some people just, he knits together those two dynamics of being a worshiper and being a warrior. And I feel like there's such a beautiful balance in your life of those two dynamics. And just to be comfortable in that space, Sometimes it might feel like, uh, you know, are you going crazy? Are you, a, are you a, like one who loves worship or are you one who loves the battle? No, it's both. And they're both supposed to work together. And uh, I just feel like uh, just the second thing is that part of your warfare is going to be the things that you produce and the things that you um, create. So uh, I don't know if, you, if you're if involved with, with computers at all or, or writing um, but I get that verse um, that your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies, Psalm 45. And your, your arrows are the things that you create. And I'm not sure if that, or what that space is, if it's writing, if it's computer, something. But it's something that you're doing. And, and it, the, the result is that it's piercing the hearts of the king's enemies. So, yeah, bless you, Joshua, as one who crosses over, one who advances, and one who loves and uh and and is devoted to jesus awesome very cool praise the lord i love it all right and just uh let me put this out here real quick and then jeff you can go but uh if you guys are on here right now i would love for you to try to take a risk and write a comment write a word for someone else who's been commenting even if you don't know them we don't know a lot of these people so <laughs> Right, Dean? <laughs> like, I have no idea. <laughs> I love it. So um, seriously, though, friends, take a risk. I'm watching out here, okay? So it's a safe place where all, like, my whole team is here. We've got our eyes on it, so don't worry. But seriously, take a risk. Give a word to someone. Practice. I would love to see you guys practice. And, again, we're going to try to get to as many names as we can. But just know, like, you know, we, we will do it again tomorrow, too. <laughs> All right, but welcome, welcome. Yeah, great. Thanks for joining us, Joshua. That's so cool. All right, and Jeff, go ahead. Cool. I've got word for Donna Mariner Gardener, I believe her name is. Um, oh, there we yeah. go. And I saw, and Heather does this all the times, and she's got a little props. I don't know if you got them ready. The chicken and the bones. And you eat the mm. meat. Yeah, come on, Heather. Oh. Come on, this one. Help me with this one. Okay, I'm helping you. Right, there we go. So what you're saying, you eat the meat and you spit out the bones, yeah? Right? And I, I just felt, I was like, wow. And I just felt like God was just going to give you a feast. And I was like, I saw your name. And I was like, and then that, it added, as I saw it, I saw Mariner, which is to do with sea, and Gardener, which is to do with land. And I saw surf and turf and food and the whole picture built up. And I was like, yeah, and God's going to strengthen you up. And I was like, I've got, I've got my weights here. And I was like, right. <laughs> you so are prepared, props. If you're just bone, you ain't picking that up. And I just felt God's going to strengthen you. He's going to feed you. He's going to add to you. He's going to give you strength, not just for yourself, but that people are going to come to you like so in, in a spiritual way. But people are going to come to you. Does anyone know a good, not just a good one, a great one, a great personal trainer, 
because I need to get back into shape. I need to sort myself out. I need to know someone that I can go to. And I'll, I'll just see people coming to you, Donna, and that you're just going to actually teach them. They're going to see a difference in you because God's fed you and God's strengthened you. And they're going to say, I want some of that. Wow. And there's going to be a following, not just of the, obviously of you, it's about Jesus, obviously, but people are going to see a Jesus in you so much so that they're going to go, wow, I want some of that. And it's like they're going to join like your gym sort of thing. I, I need to be part of that. We're going to go out. We're going to train together. We're going to read together. We're going to pray together. We're going to prophesy together. We're going to do everything spiritual together. And it's going to be this whole team building going on. That's just going to be so powerful and strong, man. I, I'm wow, man. Proper beef, proper proper food, proper something to chew on with power. You know, real strength afterwards. You know what you take in, you digest, you take everything from it, and you absorb all of the goodness out of that. And I just see that completely for you, Donna. <laughs> That's so great. Oh, let us know how that spoke to you, Donna. That'd be awesome. Oh, look, yes, exactly. Peace. God's going to feed you and strengthen you. Come on, that's so good. Um, Crazy Mama, guess what? Yeah. We're going to practice together here in just a minute. So hold tight. We're going to practice together. Um, and I also wanted to give a word to Norma because I think you guys are together here. Uh, here it is. Yes. All right. So, Norma. I was just seeing a picture. I just got the word comfort and like a comforter, especially I'm assuming you're an American. So we like our comforters, uh, which I don't know, maybe use the word duvet. But um, I just, you know, in America, again, we have these comforters, right? So like in a lot of other countries, they seem to be a bit smarter. They have the thick stuff, but like the duvet, but then they put the sheet on the outside so it's easier to wash it. Whereas in America, we have the whole comforter where all the sweaty is inside of the sheet, you know, it all, you can't like separate it. I don't know why we do that, but Hey, but I feel like the Lord is saying to you, Norma, that you're someone who brings so much comfort. Like you can't separate it. You are who you are. You're so real. Like, uh, you know, sometimes people will have one face in one place and have another face in another face. Like you don't know anything about that <laughs> because I feel like you're someone that just like a comforter is a comforter and that you, you can't separate it. It is all one thing. And you just like, I just see you like wrapped up in it. It's like, Oh, and I see even people giving like bear hugs. Like you just really represent both the nurturing, like of the Holy spirit, but like the, the father heart, like the mother heart of God and just comforting people. And I just see you taking people into your embrace. And I heard James Jordan, I think it was, that said this with Father Heart Ministry of New Zealand. Or I think maybe Jack Frost talked about it first, but whatever, that group of people. But they talked about how, like, their arms, when they hug people, it's an extension of the Father's arms. And I just really want to encourage you, Norma, that as you hug people, like, you're an extension of the Mother Heart of God. Like you're the extension of the arms of God and you really bring people into a place of safety and warmth and comfort where they can actually be vulnerable and safe because they know that you're a straight up comforter. Like you aren't anything else. You're exactly what you look like, what you feel like, what you show. That's who you are. And I feel like God is so blessed by you that you're an extension of his arms um, in just your everyday life. So I bless you with that, Norma. He's so pleased with you. Wow. And, um, all right, let's see. Yes. I'm trying to remember P-M-A-H. You told me your name, and I totally forgot it already. <laughs> What's your real name again? Uh, but anyway, give a word. Please, rem please remind us of your name. I'm so sorry. I totally forgot again. You did tell me, but I forget who it was. I know that you're friends with Diza, or you're related to Diza. I know that part. I remember that part. All right, Dan, you have a word? Okay. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I don't want to say your name wrong, but Pamak, Esro, or Mock. I don't think that's yeah. his name. It's just an ad. It's not his name because uh, he told me his name last time, but I forgot. Okay. Well, however I'm going to address him, you know, or, uh, you know, so I saw uh, a little paper airplane, the ones you used to make, like they're styrofoam and they look like regular airlines and you throw them across the room to they hit the door. I feel like actual flying for you is actually like hitting the mark to hitting an open door. It's not just point A to point B, and, you know, point A to point B and sort of like 
just going along for the ride, but it's like new doors and openings. And I feel like um, your hopes are looking to transition into a new open door and that you have a good receptive nature for that. And when you travel abroad, wherever you go, that you have a value for that. It doesn't need to be a plane. It could be a car, it could be a bike, it could be somewhere else, but they're open doors. And I feel like that's a good perception that you're receiving and that you're able to be entrusted with things because of this hope, but you'll go do it. Um, there's a talent story in the Bible of Jesus giving talents and some used it, some didn't, you know, buried it. You're not burying your talents. So I feel like you are stepping in, there's hope. And when you like to travel, there's open doors. And when you do physically travel, there will be open doors. Um, I really feel that like you have value for that and caring for the community. I know there's some music out there in the world that's like, I'm going to get mine, my stuff. I'm just going to get what's from me. And I really feel that that's not you. I feel like there's a real extension from you that's really gracious and it's inspiring to other people to to give. And it's a real integrity. It's not something flashy and showy. And it's it's really important because I feel like a lot of people who are talented mean well, but they lose their way. And you actually encourage them to return to the way they're supposed to go. Your inspiration and what he's called you to do encourages other people to go in that way to where you're traveling. They should go. You're going that way. They should. They're going with you. And you're a very good accompanying person. You you help reveal Jesus like Jesus revealed to Peter and his wife and they didn't recognize him. Their hearts burned, but then they communed. I feel like in your communion with God, as doors open, they're going to reveal Christ and his identity in them and you and that you're going places where there's hope and that you are bringing the kingdom the message to those places, wherever that is. And nations can be ethnic groups or ethnos in the Bible. So it may be in your town. It may be people from another nation. It could be going to other places. But I really feel like you understand that, that there's a door and you're aiming for that mark and your, and your childlike love and your love of what he does, your joy that you bring to community is so valuable and inspirational and it helps those around you to embrace that gospel of peace that removes all that chaos that's in their lives. So bless you and thank you for being here today. So good. Great. All right. So I also have a word here for crazy miles slash miles. Um, miles, every time I see your name, like I, I feel acceleration. Like I feel like if a race car is going really, really fast, uh, I just see like, okay, look, I literally have a car. Oh, it kind of looks like a race car. So boom, I just see it like you're leaving everybody in the dust kind of thing. Um, but I just feel like the Lord is really saying that um, like you're just, you're on an accelerated track. And I feel like God is saying like, I don't know. I feel like you're someone that really loves adventure. You love, you, you're like an adrenaline adrenaline, adrenaline junkie. <laughs> like, I don't know if you like adrenaline, but I just feel like you love the thrill, you love like thrills in life. And I feel like, I just feel like, um, how do we say this? Like, I just feel like God, like you, you want to, like, I just feel like you're a radical like person. You love to live radically. Like you don't really follow into the rules. And I remembered uh, this, these two kids that I knew and they were brothers. And like he was, the one brother was telling me about this really huge water slide that his brother was going to go on maybe in Dubai or something. And the, the, the brother who was a huge risk taker, he like gets on the water slide and as the lifeguard guy was going to tell him instructions, he was already down. You know, <laughs> He was already down the slide. And I mean, it was crazy. It was like a super, super, like one of the highest ones in the world. And I just feel like um, that God is like saying, hey, if you think the, the thrills of life are crazy, the thrills with me are even more amazing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is an invitation almost for you to like get into like, the roller coaster of Jesus and experience it in a whole new way. And I feel like you, what you've experienced is thrills here on earth. Like God is saying it doesn't hold a candle to the thrills of Jesus. And I just want to speak over you. Like, I just feel like our whole team just agrees with this right now that, um, that you're just going to experience the radical Jesus. So you're going to see the supernatural things of life. You're going to see people healed in ways you've never seen them healed. I feel like God is just saying it's time to take out risk. I know you don't know how to do that yet, but it's okay. Like just God is going to, he's with you. Holy spirit is with you and you just need to go with him and he will show you what to do. But I just see you taking really radical, radical risks for the kingdom and it's going to blow you away. 
So I bless you with that, Miles. <laughs> yes, Miles. I want to add on for you. Of course, you don't know your real name. Yeah, Miles. It's Miles. It's Miles. Oh, that's his real name. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I thought it was just his fun name. Um, but yes, I, 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 I okay. So Heather knows him. Yes, no, I, I don't. Agree. I just don't. asked him. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> okay, I see, I see, I see. okay. I, I, I had the same ex impression that, that Crazy Miles, you are such a fun guy. No, you, you are you are crazy, you're fun, you know, you are such a delight, uh, such a great company. But yet I also see in you and uh, it's almost like in your heart, inside you of all the craziness, yet there's something solid about you. And I saw you like Forrest Gump. You run, you keep running for miles after miles. And actually, while you are crazy and have fun and adventure, a risk taker, whatever, but yet inside you, you have that passion, you have that determination, you have the perseverance, like James said, you know, the perseverance that will produce character in you. And I saw you like a Forrest Gump. You just run, Forrest Gump, the famous popular movie, that you were just running, 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 and you kept running and you kept persevering. And I just see that in you, you have an aspect of you that you have a very persevering spirit. And God loves that persevering spirit because mm. as you persevere, you're developing your character. You're stretching your 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 spiritual muscles, you're, you're strengthening, you're toning, you're building up the spiritual muscles. Therefore, I bless you that amidst all the fun, you actually have a lot of depth in you and God is calling up the depth in you. He wants to bring up the depth that's in you out into the surface. He wants to bring out the persevering, the, the, the determining determination in you that's so beautiful because it's going to make you press in for the goal press in for the prize, press in as a champion. Bless you. Awesome. Very cool. Yes. And guys, Holy Spirit knows you. He knows everything about you. And the best adventure we can ever be on is with Jesus. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, if life is boring, then you don't know Jesus enough. Oh. <laughs> he is not boring. <laughs> Trust me awesome wow that's so cool praise the lord come on way to go way to go that's awesome awesome dan <laughs> and I'm glad you figured out your name again thank you leanne <laughs> that's so great all right guys uh yeah exactly this is what i'm seeing as well for you um miles see someone as an evangelist since you're creative since you're very grateful to god exactly exactly all right. Well, speaking of practice, we're going to practice now. Um, okay. Oh, Dan, do you, do you mind waiting or do you want to give the word now? It's up to you. I mean, I, um, whatever you do. You can go ahead, give the word, and then we'll do an activation. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to say your name right. Dr. Adrian Benavides. Is that is that like South American? I, I, you know, sounds South American. Sounds, sounds nice. I think of Benavides as been alive, you know, a little play on English, like Vivo, you know, been alive. I really saw that you're helping people straighten out and put the hope in sort of like a, a plane. I saw a picture of it spinning out of control and then a wing got put on the other side and it was smoothed out like butter. Like it just, just, you know how you spread butter? That thought was reconnected. Like it was welded at the back of smooth. I feel like your gentle touch and the words you speak is like, puts the wing back on the plane of people's hope. It's it's flying, but it's missing the other part. Like there's the the doctrine mental state and there's the emotional health state and you just, and it puts it back together. And then I saw a leg of an animal and it was bending at the joint and then you smoothed it and the skin like smoothed out like straightening a leg pant, like you like a pair of slacks that's properly fitted. And then it got to the hoof, the excess skin just kind of like tapered off and it was nicely fitted. And I feel like you're helping people feel comfortable in their skin. I don't know if you're an animal doctor that does with people or a people doctor, but I felt like it, you were helping people to be tailored to who they are and you're helping see their identity. So their mission flies because a lot of things that we want to do, you know, how we perceive them affects how we do those things. And so you're helping people see the hope that's in their life and who they are and what they're good at, what they're gifted at and where things may be out of joint or they don't feel comfortable like it works. 
you're helping people know who they are and how they walk in their faith. And I feel like that animal leg is like where their foot meets the ground, how they run, how, how metaphorically speaking, it, it helps to run. I don't know if you're a real, like a veterinarian, maybe you do that. People care about their animals, but I'm seeing that in this image, you're helping people's mission to be more tailored specifically to who they are, to they're comfortable in who they are, to they have security in who they are and something that's very meticulous and takes a lot of training to explain. You do it in a smooth manner and it starts to weld and mold and spread like butter and starts to make them more comfortable in who God's designed them to be and carry out the purposes of hope in their life. So bless you, Dr. Uh, Adrian Benevis. Um, I just, if you're a blessing to people and I feel like God's doing great works through you. Awesome. Very, very cool. And um, just want to show this as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. So Peter has a word here. So check it out. That word, if that speaks to you, take that word for you and your situation. Hello, Peter from Nova Scotia, Canada. Cool. <laughs> and some confirmations here as well from Miles. That is so cool. And maybe you will have those confrontations with people about Jesus in a good way. They're going to have whole new experience. And Dan, I don't know if you saw this word as well for you. That looks like a good word for you. You guys are doing great on writing words to each other. That is so awesome. Keep doing it. Keep it up. It is so amazing. I love that this is like a blessing feed. It's not just about us doing it here, but we can all just give to each other. It's beautiful. Beautiful. No matter where in the world we are. All right, friends, we are going to do a quick activation because it's the best pretty much. All right, so here we go. Um, I want you to ask Holy Spirit. Hold on, I like typed this out already. <laughs> I was trying to be prepared. All right, so hold on a second. Here we go, question number one. Okay, so if you haven't been with us before, because I know there's some new people here, this is what we call following the breadcrumbs of the Holy Spirit, okay? So when we ask God for bread, he doesn't give us a stone. When we ask God for fish, he doesn't give us a serpent, okay? He gives us bread. And then my question is, what flavor? Okay, because he has like a, a limitless bakery in heaven. Okay, so there's plenty of it. So the first breadcrumb you're going to ask for Holy Spirit is ask him what animal. So right now, not don't just think like, oh, I want to pick this one because it's my favorite, but just ask Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what animal do you want to show me? And what's the first thing that comes to mind? And then I want you to write that in the comments. So what animal is Holy Spirit showing you? And write that down. Dun, dun, dun. Holy Spirit. Hold on. I got to ask Holy Spirit. <laughs> hmm. Okay. I see it. All right. <laughs> Jeff, what do you have? Uh, I've got a cheetah. Cheetah. Dan, what do you have? A pelican. Ooh. <laughs> Ling? Lion. Lion. And Dean? A cat. A cat. What kind of cat? Do you know what kind of cat? Uh, just like a house cat. I don't know. Oh, just like a house cat. <laughs> and I got that paradise bird, like from the planet Earth, you know? Yeah, I haven't thought about that for like 10 years. <laughs> so good, great. You guys are doing great. Look, we've got koala bear. We got a lion, a tiger, bear, squirrel, wolf. Lion, great job. Good, good, good. Keep them coming. So what animal? And honestly, if you didn't see or hear anything, just write one down. Okay. Hey, there's my little sister. Hey, Brittany. Uh, red panda. Very cool. Good. So write down. Yes, cheetah. There we go. So write, ask Holy Spirit. Oh, you don't have to write it down unless you want to. But um, yes, perfect. Perfect. Very good. All right, now the second question I want you to ask Holy Spirit. This is the second breadcrumb, okay? And I'm going to type this out, so give me one second. Okay, so the second question is, ask Holy Spirit uh, if uh, what verb would he use to describe it? What verb, or we could say adjective, would he use, what verb or adjective? Anyway, I'll just write that, okay? So hopefully I wrote that right. <laughs> Spelled it right. So ask the Holy Spirit for a verb or adjective to describe your animal. Okay. All right. So 
for me, my first breadcrumb is that I got the Paradise Bird, and the second one is Showy, Showy. Okay, Jeff, what did you get? And in the comments, write both, write the first and the second thing you got so you can kind of follow it along. All right, great. Okay, Ling, you got what? Ling? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I posted it on the... <laughs> I, I know, I saw that. <laughs> Lion Lap Raw. Oh, good. And Jeff, what'd you get? I got Cheetah and Fast. Oh, Fast. Dan? Pelican and Looking. He's looking. Oh, Dean? Playful, Cat and Playful. Oh, nice. Very good, very good. Okay, now I want you to ask Holy Spirit, where is it? Where is it? Or you could ask, what is it doing? So where is it or what is it doing? So the third question is, where is it or what is it doing? Okay, so that's the third question you want to ask Holy Spirit. Where is it and what is it doing? And write all three, write all three in there. Okay, so Holy Spirit. Oh, interesting. Okay. Ling, you're so good at writing yours down. So what's the first one? Lion. Is it asking me? Yeah. Because so, I'm looking at Facebook instead of the stream. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> a lion loud roar in my heart. Yes, we oh. got a lion. <laughs> <laughs> That's from the IKEA in San Francisco. FYI, awesome. Jeff, what did you get? I got cheetah that's fast and it's running after its food. It's like after a kill, you know. Because they don't run for no reason. They run on purpose. <laughs> that's so good, Dan. What did you get? Pelican looking at the edge of a jungle. Wow. Nice, Dean. What did you get? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got a playful kitty in our family room or in our lounge. Oh, very good, very good, awesome. And I got this paradise bird. I got the word showy, and I saw it on the limb of like a tree limb, like the end an end of a tree limb. Yeah, great. Now I want you to ask Jesus this question. This is a fourth question. Say, Jesus, what are you, what, where are you, or what are you saying to me? Using all of this that we've learned now, okay? So, Jesus, hold on, I can't spell that. Jesus, where are you, or what do you want to say to me about that scenario? About the scenario that he's been showing you, okay? So, just so you guys kind of know, this is like the easiest way to actually ask Holy Spirit, like even in your everyday life, like for in the morning or when you're on the bus waiting, Holy Spirit, what do you want to show me? What is he highlighting? What stands out to you? Okay. Like for example, I'm just going to give a little example here. Like if I'm looking at the map, to be honest, the first thing that stood out to me was this color right here. And I'd say, Holy Spirit, what are you saying about this area? And it's actually Kazakhstan, which I don't know much about. But I hear the word wild. I'm like, Holy Spirit, what are you saying about wild? And I hear now the word free. Holy Spirit, what are you saying about this yellow, wild, free, this place? And I feel like he's saying, that's my heart for those people. So I'm hearing the Lord say to me now, like, my heart for those people is that, that, that they've been made to be wild, but that they will be free in their hearts. So we just released that over the people of Kazakhstan right now. <laughs> but it's that easy, guys. Like, it's that easy. We are following the breadcrumbs of heaven, okay? There's so much. God gives manna. He also gives us breadcrumbs from heaven, and, there's, and it means a lot, okay? All right, so where is Jesus? Jeff, what did you get? I got cheated at its fast. It's running after a kill, and I got told you're not a victim. Oh, that's intense. Good. Ling, what did you get? A lion loud roar in my heart. Be bold and take the rolling position. Oh, good. Yeah. Guys, I love these. Can you not tell? Dean, I am not get? rolling kind of person, you know. <laughs> I, we're listening, Ling. We're listening. I'm not the rolling kind of person. <laughs> oh, but are you? You're getting in the rolling position. <laughs> that wouldn't wouldn't that be funny if the last thing Jesus is like roar? <laughs> he might. He might. <laughs> you can put it on mute. It's okay. All right, yeah. Dean. What did you get? Uh, I just want to check. Are you going to make us make these animal sounds at the end? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> I, I haven't heard from Holy Spirit yet, so we'll see. You know, I'm not Are you saying suggesting? Never. You can do it, Dean. You can make the sound. <laughs> <laughs> we got to move into prophetic acts. <laughs> exactly. Breakthrough. So, Dean, what did you get? I guess I got a playful kitty in our family lounge. And uh, I felt the, the Holy Spirit say that I'm um, I'm as playful as like your house cat in your family having fun amongst you. Wow, oh, that's so good. That's so good. And he is, he is. Dan, what did you get? I got pelican looking and in the jungle. And so what he's saying is I'm looking in the jungle for signs of life and then I'm going to the ocean, grabbing the fish out of that grace and putting them in the river so they can thrive and finding their way in that jungle. So I'm looking for pathways in the jungle. I'm exploring oh. for, for pathways of life. And I'm actually scooping a fish like a person and just like, Bloop, you know, and just sort of speak words and put them in the streams. And that's what I, that's what I got out of that. So that's so wow. great. Very cool. And just to highlight some others here, <laughs> Linda got squirrel, balancing, playing, jumping, running, chasing, navigating through a, from tree to tree, stay focused. Oh, that's good. And Ling, you shared yours. That was great. Cheetah, fast running, time to move, run with passion for me. Such a good word. You reach men and young people in a unique way. Some people not understand, but the people you reach with blessed and understood by you. Yes, good. That's always a good word right there. Very good. Let's see. Sorry, I'm like trying to find these. Okay. Rolling. All running, great perspective. Bear at rest, eating, praying, take care of myself in nature. That's good. Very good. Excellent. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, do you see this? Oh, wait, where'd it go? This one. Really? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Yeah. Sorry. It was Peter. Peter said he wants to hear you roar. And then um, Leanne said that it's, she want, she confirms the same. And I was like, hey, hey, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, no pressure, no pressure thing, but yeah. I missed the roar. I didn't miss the roar, did I? I had to refresh my screen. I missed the roar. No, no, you didn't roar. You didn't roar. You didn't roar. Coming, it's coming, then. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany got red panda, smart, unique, climbing waterfall, slow and steady, wins the race. Very good. Very good. Wow. Uh, I'm still working on where Jesus is all with mine. Um, I mean, yeah, I think I'm still working on that for a second. But here's the last question, okay? <clears throat> Very good. So you guys are doing great. These are so good. Here's the last question. So I want you to ask Holy Spirit if he was supposed to take if he was to take all that you've just seen and heard. Okay, so we want the final. Wait a minute. Where's my bread? We want the final piece of bread here. So I want you to ask Jesus if you're supposed to put that all into one sentence or phrase. What does Jesus want to say to you right now? What is he saying to you about all of that? So take all of that together and say, God, what do you want to say? Holy Spirit, what do you want to say to me about all those breadcrumbs put together? What is like the, the main theme of it? Ask him what he's saying. Okay. Very good. Oh, this is so fun. Hold on. I'm going to take a second to ask Holy Spirit. All right, so with mine, I got the paradise bird. I got its um, it's showy, but it's on a limb. But I felt like Jesus is there saying, hey, like, I'm there with you. Like, I feel like he just wants to encourage me, like, you're not going to fall. You know what I mean? It can feel a little tedious, but he's like, you're, you're like, doing exactly. You're, you're right where you need to be, and I'm going to make sure that I'm right there with you through it all. So you don't have to worry when things feel shaky, so to speak. You know, so that's so cool. Thank you, Jesus. Jeff, what did Holy Spirit say to you? If you no, want to share. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I've got I've got know who you are in me, as in know who I am in him. So mm. good. Yeah. Dean, what did you get? Yeah, so it is interesting just to take a step back. Um, when I first thought of the animal, I actually uh, a number of different types of cats flashed through my mind. Like I saw a cheetah and then a lion and then a tiger and then a little house cat, and then different types of cats. But then I kind of settled on the house cat. Um, but now I, I'm kind of remembering that, and I feel like uh, just the sense of the Holy Spirit being a playful 
cat, but then at times also a roaring lion, and then at times also a cheetah chasing its kill. And I just feel like the Holy Spirit just saying, explore the different dimensions of me, and sometimes experience my playfulness, sometimes experience my roar, sometimes experience my 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 warrior uh, side, and and all of them come together and and are just like uh, expressed in in the Holy Spirit. But just um, just to explore explore those different dynamics. That is so cool. I love how just something so simple and it just gets kind of like mm. it just increases, like it just opens up, like it's like you turn the corner and you're like, whoa, I didn't see all that before, you know, or just a new revelation. Fresh revelation on it. That's so cool. I love it. Very good. Um, also, so uh, team, I just wrote in like some of the names to focus on here as we wrap it up a little bit in a few minutes. Um, Dan, what did you get? Oh, I got the pelican looking by the shore, looking for fish. And what it told me was that I'm in the right environment, even though it's a different ecosystem. Or like I'm still doing my function in the nature, even though it's sort of the same nature but not my environment so it's like i'm in the right place even like even prophetically like you know new ways new cultures you, you're meeting new groups of people that have their own thing and finding a way to continue to thrive in the function god's designed you sort of like you can keep you just wow. keep doing it you don't really look like a jungle bird but you know it's okay you know just you just kind of you're still doing it you know you're still you're still running you're still doing the things so the encouragement of like different seasons and you're doing different things that kind of thing so great. I love it. And Ling, what do you feel like God is saying to you? Oh, um, I kind of agree with Dean. When I first thought of the animal, I saw like cats, cheetah, and all the whole cat family. But I, but somehow it just hit me. It's to be lion. And I guess my country, Singapore, lion is an emblem as well. Lion. Yeah, correct. In Singapore, lion. Singapore, which is the mythical lion creature. From Singapore becomes Singapore. It's a mythical lion creature. So the in, in our country emblem, we have the lions there. And I'm born in the month of August, so I'm like a real kind. But anyway, um, a lion. Uh, I just felt God. It seems similar to Jeff said, so like fear not, be bold to speak, because especially for Singapore, it's such a tiny island, among like a great, just a dot in the whole world map. I I you know sometimes I felt like that too. And the guy just said, no, it's like Jeff said, fear not, I'm with you. You have a voice. It's just like Singapore has a voice. I have a voice too. That's so good. Very good. Awesome, guys. I loved it. I just love it. God is always, God is always, always speaking. And speaking of which, two quick announcements. And then we'll get back to giving um, some more words here before we wrap up. But let me show you the first one. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, okay, so there is a workshop that we are doing. I'm doing next Saturday, you guys, and I am so excited for this, like for real. It's going to be amazing. Uh, Holy Spirit's going to show up, and I tell you what, we are going to have so much fun because we're just going to practice, um, like just giving so many words and just with each other. And just like what we just did, we're going to do a lot more of that. And it's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to practice with lots of different people. And you just get to practice in a very safe place and in a fun way to hear Holy Spirit. So you can activate more of Holy Spirit in your everyday life. So come and join us. If you know anyone that is interested, please, please, please let them know there is an event page for it. So I will post that um, at the uh, probably at the end here, unless I get it sooner or someone else gets it sooner for me. But um, there is an event for it. So please, please, please come. That would be amazing to see you there. But it's going to be just, like I said, a lot of fun. Um, and one more thing I just want to also post here, because we've got Ling on our on this with us today. But Ling has been an Emerging Prophets course, and she is doing prophetic consultations. Now, for the course, she needs to do five more um, prophetic con consultations in order to pass her class or whatever. So if you would love a prophetic consultation, it is $25, which I think is, is such a deal. And Ling is amazing. She's a lot of, had a lot of inner healing ministry and all that, but she's just so many amazing things about Ling, okay? She's helped me so much as this being my friend. So I would encourage you to check this out. Get in touch with Ling. Um, that would be awesome that you could help her out, but also she can even more help you out. And 
uh, bring you into even greater freedom, freedom. So check it out. Contact her. That would be amazing. And we'll also post that later after this live feed because you can't post pictures in the middle. But she's on here. So tag her or make a comment and say, hey, I'm interested. And she will follow up with you. Okay. All right. So Lorraine, oh, I'm sorry you're going to be out of town. But good news. Someone has a word for you right now. <laughs> So, Jeff, can you give me the word? Yeah. Yeah, cool. I've got a, right, a word from Lorraine. Um, yeah, so basically what I saw is I felt that God was saying that you're, you're a person who likes to like, um, dot your I's and cross your T's and you like things just so, you know. Um, I, I'm not sure if that's accurate for you, but I, I just felt like, you, you know, like when you see like the pillows on the bed or the pillows on the sofa, you just like go and line them up and all the teacups are straight in the cupboard. And I just felt that God was just going to honour you in that, that 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 is just something upright and and standing in in being in such a way. And He needs people like that. We don't all need to be like that. But I just felt like God sees that. He understands how how you like things just so. But He needs people like that. So you can, you can speak to people in in a different way. That because I'm a bit more laid back and a bit more casual. But people don't get me. But but when I see you speaking to people to like in in ways that I would never touch people, and and different people in different ways, and I, I feel God's going to just open the door to be able you be able to speak to people in such a way, and it just blow their minds with with just what you how you just go so accurate, so structured, you know when people say all all, all your ducks are in a row, I just felt like when 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 you open your mouth, Holy Spirit's going to go bang 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 bang. bang. And everything just makes so much sense to that person that, yeah, it will just throw them away. That's what I feel for you, Lorraine. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to add for Lorraine, I just a quick one, that I just see you as a peacemaker. Somehow I felt that you you have the gifting, that you, you, you can go into a room and you bring peace. You're able to bring people with different opinions, yet they're able to come into some sort of agreement because you are a peacemaker, you carry the anointing of peace. Awesome. <clears throat> very cool, very cool. All right, Dean, you have a word for Matt? Yeah, I, I was trying to find Matt in the stream, but I couldn't find him. But I've got a word about music for Matt, and I really hope he's a musician because this is all about music, <laughs> if he's not. <laughs> Jeff, knows well. Jeff knows Matt. Jeff knows Matt, so he can help. Yeah. 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 Cool. Don't say anything yet. Let him give the word first, and then. Is he, a, <laughs> is he a musician? Um, not to my knowledge. <laughs> Just, I, I don't, I don't, I, I've never seen him play. I've never seen him play an instrument. I don't know. <laughs> Don't let that if Holy Spirit show you something, it might yeah, be, yeah, be something cool. you need to step into. So don't yeah, don't yeah. Make, go for it, then go, go. Okay, well then maybe it's not about music, maybe it's just about the, the season. Okay, um I just kind of feel like a turning <laughs> quick change in direction. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't change it. Keep it pure. It's spiritual. Right? It's spiritual. It's spiritual. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, here's the word. I feel the, the Lord releasing a new sound. And uh, I feel like there's a new thing uh, coming out of you, Matt. I feel like, um, you know, in the same thing, the same way that uh, I'm going to date myself a little bit here, but Martin Smith uh, and Delirious released a new wave of sound over worship. <laughs> Uh, I feel like there's a, a wave of a new season uh, coming out of you, and uh, just yeah, I just uh, I bless you as a movement maker. Uh, you're going to be a, a movement maker and uh, a, a tidal wave uh, breaker, and and I just and I just Whoa. yeah, release okay. a new thing coming out of you, something powerful. That's really good, Dean. That's so, yes, so good. <laughs> Can't find his name. It's all good. <laughs> no, I, I, don't awesome. I don't think he has come in. I don't know where he got his name from. That's what, yeah. What did you say, Jeff? 
I haven't seen his name. Did he actually comment? Anyway, he did. He did, but they run out when we get so many names. Oh, so okay, cool, cool. That's why I tagged him in it as well, so you can see it. But right. Matt, I just want to add to this. I just see, like, I know you're a police officer, but I see handcuffs, and I just see them um, handcuffs becoming un, un, whatever you call it, but uncuffed, uncuffed. But when I see that picture, I see that there was actually no lock on the handcuffs. And I feel like the Lord is going to, obviously, I mean, we already know this about you and you probably don't know this about yourself, but God is going to use you to help break people free from the things that they think are handcuffs in their lives that are holding them back. But it actually, it was never locked. It never was. It's just an illusion. And you're going to help them see that what, uh, what they thought was real is just an illusion and they've been actually free the whole time. And you're going to help them step uh, further into their identity. So I bless you with that, Matt, as well. <laughs> Very cool. All right, let's see. Um, okay, I'm going to give a – does anyone have a word ready or I'll jump on one? I don't know. Anyone? Dun, dun, dun. Michelle? We'll go Michelle as new name. Oh, um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Michelle, I feel like there's a there's a, a grace and and there's like a like a lamp stand. There's a light lamp, and I saw the lamp, and I feel like it's a promise. I don't know if you know what lamp stands, but in the old days, the menorahs were put on big lamp stands. They weren't really set on tables. They weren't like set on little tables like a dinner piece. And I feel like the promises of God and every perfect thing in Him, like the seven spirits it talks about in God, and the you know wisdom, might, knowledge, counsel. Revelation, uh, whatever there's, I'm, I'm missing one. <laughs> but, but but basically, the 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 perfection of God uh, represented as the spirits, but the endless volume that can be expressed in just one or two examples of light that you really carry a light that's endless, like you carry a light that's endless. I know that um, a torch can pass on to someone else, and they carry the torch or they carry the baton. In Olympics, someone carries a torch and they go for great distances and they pass it on to the next person. I really feel like, like you carry some light that's endless in you that you carry on to other people, Michelle, that there's a promise and hope for you that's sort of warming and, and, and a kindness turning towards you right now, sort of warming your face. Like, like here's a dark place in the light and it's turning in and it's warming the hope in you. And when you carry that, it renews the hopes of others because they can see you why they're doing their daily life, while they're eating their food, they see you walk by, they talk to you. It's reminding them that the light of God is still around, that God is still here. God is here. God is available. And you really carry an encouragement, Michelle, and, the, and that light is turning and there's a kindness towards you to reveal new things of God. Uh, endless hope, an endless hope is in this, this the spirit of God. There's an endless hope for you and you, you understand and grasp that and you're carrying that very well. And it really does bring encouragement to other people. He, he is alive and very well. So I, I uh, appreciate you uh, being here today. But the, the word I really feel is you're a carrier of hope, a carrier like a, a light, like the mm. Statue of Liberty with, the, with liberty, freedom, for freedom's sake. That is like the best thing. C.S. Lewis said that one of the differences between all the religions and Christianity is grace. Mm. We, have, we have grace. And so I really feel like you carry a fire of grace, Michelle, uh, Miss Murphy. So I feel like a grace is with you. There's a kindness that is very powerful and very pure that is very encouraging people to keep going on and enduring in what they need to do. So bless you, Ms. Michelle. Can I, can I add on to that? That's okay. Yeah, I'll just want to, yeah, I'll, just, go for it. I'll just want to, whatever the right word is, add on to this. What I saw was, was I do photography um, and we have to learn about how light works and all the rest of it. And what I never understood was how fast light was. The speed of light is phenomenal. It can go around the world in the click of a second. And, I, and the importance of the speed is, I, I just feel for you right now, is that when people see the light, they already see it coming as you enter a room. That's much more significant than the words you say. Yeah, the words you say after are obviously important, but the minute you step into a room, it's like what, what, bang! As soon as you open the door, them light, the flight's flooded in. Before they've even seen you, the lights got there before, and I just think we need to be carriers of light because people are listening to things they shouldn't be listening to, um, and the enemy just wants to get in there, but he can't 
throw light into a situation because Jesus is the light. So I just feel before the enemy even gets a chance to say anything, the light gets in there first. Bang. The light is there first. The light, the light, the light. And that the importance of it getting there. For, you know, when you hear the, the thunder and the lightning, you see the lightning first and then the thunder comes and everyone's afraid of the thunder. I just feel like the light is so significant and the speed in which it travels, it sets what's coming next. So I just feel like there's, there's this importance of you being that light. It's just so important. I, I need you, really need you to understand the significance of the light. Um, I just feel like really heavily for you, Michelle. Cool. Awesome. <clears throat> cool. Very cool. She loves Jesus. She loves the Holy Spirit. That is awesome. All right. So you have a quick word for Marion. Um, uh, yes, uh, Marion. Um, when I see your, when I saw your name, I just felt. I just felt in my whole. I just sense in me that you carry such a presence of the Lord. You are a mature lady. You're matured in the Lord and you have such maturity in you and you carry his presence so well. And it's almost like you're you are you are that 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 uh you are that person who anchors the room. You're the one who anchors people around you. When people around you are are confused and they are uh like, like they're this in this in, in disagreement, they're confused, they're lost. Yet by just your presence, just you hovering over them, you anchoring them, you bring peace, you bring clarity into a situation. And I just see that that healing water around you. It's almost like you're always in this presence of the Spirit. And because of the healing waters around you, you're able to just bring peace into the situation. You're able to call the storm, be, be still and be at peace, and you will be at peace. And, and I just find that you are the atmosphere changer. And I just bless you that you have so much in you that you are, um, that you have so much in you that that's so valuable, even especially, uh, you know, um, uh, in your environment and at this time that you can go in and bring a change in atmosphere and you just release the peace and you release the presence of the Lord because you carry that. And the more you spend time feasting with him, feasting on his peace, more time feasting on the love of Jesus, the more you carry that in you. And I see such a measure of you all filled up in your chest and in your body. And in your and it's like it's just the whole atmosphere around you. And I bless you, Marion, that you are an atmosphere changer. Uh, you shift the atmosphere and you bring peace, clarity, into the situation because like you flow with the Holy Spirit. So bless you. Keep feasting. Keep feasting on the peace and the love of Jesus because that's coming out from you like a river. Bless you. Awesome. Very cool. All right. Dean, you have a word for Brittany? Yeah, Brittany, I just get that verse, uh, Ephesians 2.10, for we God's uh, workmanship or handiwork. Uh, or also translated a uh, poem. And uh, what, I, what I feel out of that is that uh, God has really crafted you uh, with, with just such a special spirit and outlook uh, on life. And, and one area where I feel that really comes um, to the fore is your ability to take um, characteristics and, and virtues uh, that are um, almost feel like old, old traditional virtues, uh, things like respect, things like honor, things like integrity, um, and make them cool or make them culturally relevant and make them um, attractive to people. Uh, I kind of feel that you are just takes those different dynamics and presents them to the world as something very attractive. And it's got to do with that dynamic of you being the relevant and make them uh, attractive. Yeah, yeah, you being the poetry of God, where God rewrites different things and different attributes in a new, unique, creative way. And that's kind of like his expression through you. He's, he's just rewriting so many 
godly traditional virtues, but in just such a unique, attractive uh, way through through your life. That's great. That's my little sister, so I'm sure that will encourage her. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not like Dan. He got my twin last time. <laughs> That was funny. Very cool. Thanks, Dean. All right, um, friends, I'm just going to rapid fire a couple here at the end, and then we're going to wrap it up, okay? Um, but we are going to be doing a prophetic chat tomorrow. Um, oh, I'll, I'll post it here afterward. But um, sorry, I've, like, switched things around, so I can't find anything at the moment. But anyway, we're going to do a prophetic chat with Glenda from the UK tomorrow, and it is going to be amazing. So check it out. It's um, I'm going to post the picture as soon as we finish here because hashtag too many time zones, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. But um, we would love to see you there. It's going to be amazing. We're just going to process, like, talk about, like, her processing the prophetic, but also it's a time to ask questions. We will help process with you. What do you do with all these encouraging words? How do you grow in these encouraging words? So absolutely check it out. Uh, it's going to be amazing. In the second hour, we will also be giving words. So that will also be good. Um, and, okay, really quick here. Oh, sorry, five seconds. Um also, let me, sorry, I'm just trying to do this real quick. And also, I just want to, if um, anyone wants to support what we're doing here, you are welcome to, but just know that we freely get, get words from God, so we freely give them to you as well. But there's the post in case if you want to give to what we're doing here. So, because obviously when people give, it just means expansion. It means that we can grow in what the kingdom is doing here, and that's what we've been doing, and it's amazing. And then we get cool things like the timer and we get to bless others, and it's just amazing. So anyway, if you want to give, there you go, but no pressure to do that, okay? All right. Dan, oh, yeah. Check, yeah, team, you need to check the feed because there's lots of words for different people on there, so definitely check it out. Um, all right, very cool. Okay, so giving a couple words here. Sorry, I'm trying to find that list again. All right, so Ted. I just hear the father saying that you're in a season of just knowing God is your best friend, um, just like Moses. And I just feel like just as Moses' face shone in the light and in the glory, I feel like you're coming into a warmth of an intimacy with God and you're going to deeper revelation as you read the word. It's just going to become so alive to you. So I bless you with your friendship with God because it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And yo, Lisa, I just feel like God is saying he's giving you a new lease on life. Like it's going to be a new season that you're going to just like, it's just a new lease on life. Like not to look back in the past, but to look forward to the future because God has good things in store for you in your future. I think that verse is in like Jeremiah where he gives us a hope and a future. So go check that out because you have a new lease on life. Um, Laya, which is Jennifer's friend. Um, Laya, I just feel like I hear the Lord saying like the truth, Jesus is the truth. So truth is a person and that person is Jesus and the truth will set you free. And I feel like Jesus wants you to know that as you turn your gaze upon him, as you look into him, as you step into his invitation of knowing him more, you will, he will set you free. I see you like, I feel like it's almost been like, I haven't like, maybe you haven't felt like you've had a home and all that, but Jesus is calling you home and that home is into himself. And the thing is, when any of us, like I know for each one of us here on this feed, we've uh, on my team here, we've all accepted Jesus and we've come home when we've accepted Jesus. And that is what brings us peace. It's not the circumstances around us. It's the fact that Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, lives inside of us and he brings us peace. So I just hear Jesus calling you home. He's standing at the door and knocking. Revelation 3.20, I think it is. He's standing at the door and knocking and he it's an invitation to invite him in. But the truth is Jesus is the truth and he is the truth that will set you free and he'll also bring you home. So just talk to Jesus and receive his invitation. Um, and Pascal, you know, I always, I think I always get this, like I get to see pastel eggs, like Easter eggs, but you know, like he is risen, <laughs> like Easter time. But Pascal, I feel like God is just saying like, God is going to raise you up like he is risen. You know that excitement on Easter Sunday? Like God is bringing that excitement into your life, into your work situation, into your family. Like 
I feel like there's going to be also, like I said to you, Lisa, but a new lease on life where it's like that excitement is coming back. Like it's just going to be a fresh anointing upon it of just like he is risen. Like I feel like the reality of what it means that Jesus is the resurrection and the life is going to come to you in a whole new way. And just like when Mary showed up at the tomb and it was like, whoa, the tomb is empty. And the angel's like, what are you doing here? You know, go, Jesus is alive. I mean, can you imagine? Go watch The Chosen because The Chosen will give us lots of moments like that. The Jesus story uh, that's on TV now. But check it out because, guys, I, like I, Pascal, I just feel like God or anyone else that needs this, God is bringing you into a new season of He is risen and the excitement that comes with that and the power that comes with that and the anointing that comes with that. So I bless you with that. And Shauna, last one. So Shauna, um, I just saw rivers. Like I saw a bunch of different rivers. And I feel like, you know, sometimes on the river it's peaceful. Sometimes it's whitewater rafting. Sometimes there's all these different capacities. Sometimes the river's high. Sometimes the river's low. But I feel like the Father is saying, but you're in the boat with me. And God is bringing peace again to you. So it doesn't matter, again, what the circumstances look like or even what's happening on the river. The fact is you're in the boat with Jesus. And again, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And he is the one that brings the peace and calm to every storm. So I bless you with that, Shauna. All right, guys, this has been amazing. Thank you so much, team. You guys did so good. Yay! <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. And remember, we have that prophetic chat and giving words again tomorrow. So feel free to join us then. So everyone have a great night or day, whatever time it is for you. All right, bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for coming. Good work.